Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and as always I have a couple of announcements I'll start with. First of all, tomorrow on the members website we are posting another Cooking with Chef Dell. Back to school lunch making is the uh, theme. I, I can't believe the summer's gone by and we're already talking about back to school, but it is that time and Dell's going to show you some cool stuff that kids love in their lunchbox. The next thing is fall semester starts in just uh, about three weeks. So if you're thinking of taking some classes through the Wellness Farm Institute, it is time to find out about what's going on and figure out what classes you want to take. So send me an email or you can call the office and chat with us. Advanced study for September. I'm going to spend two sessions talking about Andrew Wakefield's book. He is the guy, who English doctor, who lost his medical license because he stood up to the vaccine industry. I read his book a couple of years ago. He has a new one out. I'm going to combine the two of them for these two classes. But uh, we're going to take a good look at um, the science behind vaccines, what happened to Wakefield, and all that sort of thing. I think you'll find it's a pretty interesting story. And speaking of vaccines, that's one of the things that's on the topic for our fall conference, which is November 14 through 16, right here in Columbus, Ohio. You don't want to miss it. Dr. Kathy Waller is going to be talking about vaccines. We'll be talking about uh, pain and food, foods that cause pain, foods that relieve pain. Uh, we'll be talking about mental health, addressing psychological issues and ADHD without drugs. I mean, amazing, amazing topics, amazing speakers, and you'll be hearing about our upcoming research study on inflammatory bowel diseases. Lots of new information to share, and uh, you don't want to be hearing about this on video clips the week after. You want to be here in Columbus the 14th through 16th of November. All right, I want to talk about two things today, and the first one is um, breast cancer and how normal or overweight you happen to be. And um, I'll just start by saying we all know about the obesity epidemic. Most Americans are overweight, more of them are obese. Unfortunately, the rest of the world is catching up. Even developing countries, are, it's just a straight line every year, more obese people. And of course, if you watch television and see the ads for weight loss programs, they talk about you'll feel better, you'll look better, better prospects for romantic interests, etc. And I think that's all true. And these are reasons why people want to lose weight. They want to feel better about themselves. I remember a, a member sharing with me one time. Um, she said, the truth is there aren't any happy, obese people. We just get good at putting on a real good front. So I think that's all great. But the most important reason to pay attention to your weight status is your health depends upon it. Every extra pound you carry is an additional risk factor for disease. So a recent meta-analysis of 82 studies looked at the relationship between body mass index and survival in women who had uh, breast cancer, both pre- and post-menopausal breast cancer. The studies collectively included over 200,000 women. And the bottom line was that being overweight increased the risk of uh, dying of breast cancer and the risk of all-cause mortality. And for each incremental increase in BMI, there was a proportional increase in the risk of mortality. The researchers concluded that health professionals should address weight issues at the time of diagnosis and during follow-up visits. And they acknowledge all the stuff, this is going to take time, and it may involve new staff members being involved and all this sort of thing. And, and of course, the, the always we have to include, we need more research to figure out which interventions work. And so, you know, I love this study because it draws uh, attention to the importance of um, remaining lean if you're female and you want to reduce your risk of dying of breast cancer or any other cause of death. But um, the rest of it's just ridiculous. I mean, what about talking to women before they get breast cancer? Don't you think that would be a good plan? And we really don't need more research on what type of intervention we need and, and what works. You know, I guess in every uh, occupation that I have been involved in, and I've had a few before healthcare, the way that you learn is you, you learn from people who had a proven track record and best case analyses. In other words, you look at other people and what they do and when it's successful, you try to incorporate it in what you do. Healthcare is the only occupation or business on the planet where this is not routinely done and I just don't understand. And part of the reason is that there's a strong motivation for people in this field to hang on to the status quo because they want to protect their turf and their title and their economic interest. But um, we really do have the tools and, and all the information we need to uh, prevent breast cancer and to deal with it better uh, when women are diagnosed. So anyhow, the take home point here is that if you're carrying extra weight and you think you're okay, think again. Actually, not so much. And then this is gonna be fun to share with you and I'll just start by saying I love running. 
I get um, I got dragged kicking and screaming into it. By the way, I always thought I didn't like running and I wouldn't like running, but uh, somebody dared me in front of a big group of people to run a marathon, and I was embarrassed to say no, so I said yes. And so I went out and ran the first time, and I thought I was going to die. And I didn't get a whole lot better for a while. And so I made up my mind that I was just going to run until I completed this darn marathon. And then I was going to quit and I was never going to run again. And then this really interesting thing happened about two months into the running. And that was that I started to like it. And eventually I fell in love with it. I love running. And it, I like it for all kinds of reasons. Um, it keeps me in shape, keeps me lean. And many studies have shown other benefits of running, you know, weight loss, lowers cholesterol, increases cardiovascular fitness. And a new study, love this, shows that even a little bit of running, if you can just do it 10 minutes a day, can reduce the risk of all-cause mortality and death from cardiovascular disease. So this study included over 55,000 people. They were followed for 15 years. About 25% of them were runners. The runners were mostly younger men who didn't smoke, they were leaner, they more, were more fit, and all of that was controlled for. But even after doing that, running resulted in a lower risk of death. The runners extended their lives for about three years and had a 30% lower risk of all-cause mortality and a 45% lower risk of cardiovascular death. In fact, not running was a risk factor almost as significant as having high blood pressure. And the amount of running to achieve these goals actually pretty minimal, under six miles a week. The researchers did say to get maximum benefit, you need to do at least five to 10 miles a week. And they also noted that the more people ran, the more fit they were, that just makes sense. One of the researchers, and I love this quote, Dr. Chip Levy told Medscape, what people tell me all the time is they just don't have time to exercise. My answer is that if you don't have 30 minutes to exercise, then you better find some time for dying, okay? Of course, fear of dying is not the only reason to exercise and to run. Running relieves stress. It's a way to experience the great outdoors when the weather is good. It's a great way to see cities in ways that you can't see when you're just driving around in a car. And so you might want to try it. If you're like me, you'll hate it, and then you'll love it, and then you'll want to do it for the rest of your life. All right, that's all for today. Have a wonderful day. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you again on Thursday.